Hey guys, it's Egoist Italian Ray again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you for watching the channel and also the videos. Today I'm going to continue the Unity 3D C Sharp Fundamentals. The reason why I want to do that, and I haven't posted a video in that area for a long time, because I thought I had enough to get people going, but I've been learning a lot about, you know, how to concatenate strings, not only using the classic, you know, plus symbol to concatenate two different strings, but also using a string interpolation and also how we can use the string builder if we needed to. All right, guys, so let me show you what we're going to be doing in here. Let me just open up the Unity Hub. And what I want to do is open up the Unity Editor Fundamentals. I also want to make sure that I didn't make, I didn't make any changes to that project before the, after the previous video. So let me just go ahead and go to, let's see, Personal, Games, then Unity, Editor Fundamentals, and I think I checked in everything, but let me just make sure. Yep, looks like I did. So the reason why I'm checking for this is because I, I've been providing these as a series of, of videos and I also have it in source control, which means that you can download the project and the previous basically files from my GitHub page. So you can go to github.com, Dilmar V, and I'm gonna put this in the, the link of this in the description of this video. So actually the one that I'm doing right now is Unity C Sharp Fundamentals. So this is the one that I wanna check. So if you're curious and you want to download the examples, make sure that you go to this, uh, github.com, Dilmar V, Unity C Sharp Fundamentals, and then you can clone, either clone it to use source control, or you can just basically download it as a save file. All right, so now that I have these, let me make sure that I have that. So it looks like I do, so it's Unity, C Sharp Fundamentals, and let me make sure again that I haven't made any changes. And no, no changes. Okay, so we're good to go. So what I'm going to do, let's go back into Unity and open up the, the correct project. So we're going to go down to my, I probably didn't open it for a while. So that's why, okay, let's go ahead and click on open to open it up. Go to games and I'm going to go, so this will be the location where you download this project to. So we're going to go ahead and I have a lot of different projects. There we go and open up the Unity C Sharp Fundamentals. So you can also start here when you, you know, when you start doing the examples that I'm gonna, that I'm gonna about to show you. And we can do, we can just do the, the current build target. And the version that I've been using for this project is 2018 3.10. I think I actually upgraded it, but let's see if it asks us to upgrade it, we'll upgrade it. Yep, looks like the version that I used for that project was 3.5 F1. So. I'm gonna upgrade it and I'll check it in so that you guys, you guys have the latest version. And we'll just give it a minute here to, to do what it needs to do. So just to give you an overview, I'm going to go through, so the main of this, of this video is to do what, what's called a string interpolation. I'm also gonna be going through basically concatenating strings, which is you know the, the old way, the classic way, which is by using the plus symbol. And then lastly, we're gonna look at how we can use the stream builder. All right, so it looks like I have everything open and yep, these are all my different. So let me go ahead and check it in. Let me, so I'm gonna save this project and let me check in the changes. So, so we're gonna be adding, it looks like what changed was the project version. So upgrade it, project to round on Unity, remove this extra space, 2018 3.10 F1. So if you have that version or greater than that, then you should be able to open this project. And I got checked in. Excellent. So this one is gonna be a new video. So what I'll do is I'll keep I'll keep doing the structure that we've that we did previously. So I'm just gonna uncheck that and create a new game object. And this one is gonna be 12. It's gonna enable it. And looks like I mistakenly named it incorrectly last time. So let me just fix that and also fix this. Excellent. So now, now what I'll do, I'll do the same thing that I've been doing on the previous videos. We'll go into, let's see, go into scripts and let's go ahead and create a new script. So this one is going to be, so I'm going to right click on the empty area here. It's going to be video 12. 
Excellent. So we should have basically a raw structure of our class. Now go into the video 12 game object and I'm going to remove the one, the video 11, because I cloned that one from the previous one. This one is going to be video 12. So now we should be able to start with the session. All right. So the next thing that I want you to do is I'm using Visual Studio Code. You're more than welcome to use that or you can use something else if you prefer. And I'm going to go into assets and then open the C Sharp project. All right, so we should be good here. Let me just close a couple of files that we don't need. And let's just focus on, on video 12. So in, in C Sharp, there are a lot of different ways that you can concatenate strings. And the one that I want to cover three of them. So what I'm going to do is we're going to be using the start method for this session. And I'm going to put here in the comments what, are, what we're going to be doing today. So to do. So the first one is we're going to use basically concatenating or joining strings together by using the plus symbol, which is basically the, the most common way. And just to clarify, this is not, there's nothing wrong with doing that. You can still do it. Do it. What I want to show you and what I want to get out of this video is show you different ways and, and show you reasons why you will use the other ways that I'm going to, that I'm basically going to be showing you. So you can still use plus. I use plus, you know, wh when it applies, when I think I need to use it. So it's your basically your task as a programmer to decide what works best for the project, what works best for you. And what we're going to be doing is a string interpolation. We're also going to be using and looking. So using and looking into adding the string builder. if I can type builder there we go excellent so three different things in here to do so the first one in the most common one it's gonna be you know you're you're basically using the plus symbol so what I'm gonna do here let's go ahead and add two variables so I'm gonna say first name and it's gonna be of type string we're gonna say the first name of this person is John and we're gonna just basically duplicate that variable and this one is gonna be last name and of course, it's going to be dough. And, and a lot of times when it comes to coding, you want to say, OK, your basically your product owner might say, OK, I need to display the full name. I, but you have you have this separated into two different columns because they might be in the database that way. So when it comes to that, you might need to create a new class, of course, and and basically concatenate these two and, and get and send the information back. So it's gonna it's gonna look something like this. You might say full name, and then you might say, okay, yeah, I can just do first name, and you can add spaces, and then you can say the last name. And these ones, yeah, let me just go ahead and do double quotes. Excellent for strings. So and this will work. This works, this works great. So if I say debug.log. And then we can say, okay, this one is going to be the full name. And you can say full name. And if we go ahead and, oops, and I need to, I need to do that and add a space there. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back into Unity and, and let's focus on the console so that we can see what's happening. So you can see the full name is set to John Doe. And, and that works great. You can, you can do that. That's, there's nothing wrong with that. You might, you might say, well, you know what? I also need the age, so I might need, I, need, I might need the age of this person, and this person may be 25. And then now you have a full name, and and let's say that you know you also want to display the age for some reason. So you might say, well, I can just add it here and say, okay, age. But then now you come into the problem of, hey, I have a full name here. How do I? Okay, now I can move. So I'm going to show you multiple ways. You can say, okay, yeah, I can, I can add it here. Then I can say, okay, the age, and, and then I can add a plus symbol at the age. And, and then, you know, this, this works great. There's nothing wrong with that. And in fact, it's, it's going to work. So if we go back into Unity and we hit play. You'll see, let's go ahead and hit play one more time. And you can see full name and then the age is 25. Then you might say, well, I want to format it. Okay, I'll just put, you know, I'll just put a, I'll just put a pipe in there just to separate them. And, and you go back and hit play. And yeah, you get, you know, you get your pipe. So your data is getting, you know, it's getting a structure. And 
but it's really hard to to manage something like this when it comes to because you might have address you might have other things now you need to worry about this getting translated so there's a lot of different things that can can actually make this code really hard to write and you know programming changes all the time so there's nothing wrong with that and i'm going to keep saying that because if you keep doing this it's okay it just depends on the requirements but another way that you could have done that is so what i'm going to do is this is going to be one exercise one and let's in fact put a one in here for this is going to be the first way right and then what we're going to do is we're going to do we're actually going to reuse those so what i'm going to do is i'm going to start looking into a string interpolation so what is a string interpolation and, and how we can actually use it i'm also going to go back to to this way and improve it a little bit in, without using a string interpolation we're going to do we're going to do that last so we're going to do going back to say going back to one and improving it with a string that format. So I'll show you that last. Okay, so now on, on number two, we're just gonna do something similar, but instead of doing it this way, what we're gonna be doing is using, so we're just gonna say a string, and then instead of typing the full name like, like that, so we're just gonna say full, we can just say new full name, but what we're going to be doing in here, we're going to introduce a new character, and this is going to be the dollar symbol. So in the dollar symbol, you can do something that is really cool. So I can still type full name. So that still applies, but I don't need to concatenate all of those. I can just say with, you know, my query list, I can say first name. And I can, in fact, say, okay, my last name is the next thing. So I'm going to do last name, and I can say age. I can still have my pipe h and then i can say h like that so i basically got rid of doing you know the plus here the plus here the plus here the space here and then and so on so everything is in one you know in one string what i'm telling the the compiler is that i'm going to be using a string interpolation which means that you can access any variables that you have access in the you know in the current scope and you can surround them with curly braces. So you'll need a curly brace before the first variable and an ending curly brace. You can do, you can also do some crazy things in here. I can also do math if I wanted to. So I can say, okay, the age of this person is gonna be that age divided by two. Or I can say the age of this person is gonna be age multiplied by two. I can also do some cool things in here, such as, you know, if I wanted to just get certain amount of characters, I can say, okay, I only want to do a substring, and let's say that I only wanted to get the first letter. So you could say, you know, zero and one, and you can get the substring of that. And and let's see if this works. So you still need to do your debug.log because we need to print it out. But instead of doing the full name, we're going to do new full name. So let's go ahead and go back into Unity. And I'm going to stop the game from playing. Hit play. And you can see that everything works great. So I, I get my full name. I did a substring, and that's because I'm getting J, because I'm telling it that I want the first character as zero, and I want to increment by one character. The last name is Joe. I get my pipe, my H, and I'm multiplying 25 times two, which is why I'm seeing 50. So this is really, really cool and really powerful because you can do, you can do a lot, as you can see in here. I, you know, a lot of times when I was developing, I had a lot of issues with Okay, so when do I start doing the plus? And it just gets really messy. So with string, string interpolation makes it a lot much cleaner. So what, I, what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to just remove that substring and we're just gonna do H as well. We don't need to do, do any multiplication. So, so that's basically a string interpolation. You can access variables through, you know, inside of the string by using the dollar symbol at the beginning. So now that next thing is gonna be the string builder. And to be honest, I haven't used a string builder in a while. So if I make a mistake, it's because of that. I haven't really used it in a while. But the string builder is used because you a lot of times, if you need to add a lot of strings and a pain and manipulate them, the string builder is pretty fast. It's optimized to do that. So you wouldn't want to do this in a loop of you know millions of records. And then it just gets really, you know, the performance is going to be really, really bad and memory intensive. So that's why Microsoft went back and say, okay, we're gonna use an interface that is gonna help people 
and it's going to be optimized for people to use when they need to manipulate strings. So that's what the string builder is for. And the way that you access the string builder is you add a using to system.txt. And then we access it as a class. So we're going to say a string builder, which is going to be this one. And it's actually a class. So you need to say a string, create a, create a basically an object of that type. And we're going to say new string builder. And that's basically how you can create a stream builder. So what if I wanted to add data to a stream builder? So you can say append. And I can do exactly what I did here. So let's say that I wanted to add, for instance, I wanted to add the full name. Then I wanted to add the first name. So I can add the variable. Then let's say that I wanted to add the last name right after that. And of course, I'm going to need a space here. Otherwise, it's going to it's not going to have a spaces between the full name and the first name. I also need a space between those two. So what I'm going to do is let's do that. And then I need a pipe. I'm going to add spaces in between. And then I'm going to need the word the word H. So I'll just do H and then column. And then lastly, I'm going to need my variable, which is going to be H. So now that I have that, I could easily just say debug.log stream builder, stream builder to string. And let's see, on this one we did two, exercise two. On this one we'll do exercise three. So let's put a three at the beginning of full name as a prefix. Let's go back into Unity and let's see what happens with that. I'm going to hit play. And you can see that number three is also working just fine. You don't see a lot of differences, and the reason for that is because the stream builder does exactly the same thing. The only difference is that it's optimized for dealing with a lot of different strings. So that's another way that you can use, you know, you can concatenate strings. So let's go back into let's go back into one. And of course, going back to the stream builder, you can use inter in basically string interpolation in here as well. I could have done something like you know a string interpolation of that and then and then that so you can combine and that works just fine just like this will work if i wanted to combine a string interpolation with you know concatenating strings there's nothing that will prevent you from combining the three of these everything should just work just fine so now let's go back into here and so what we're going to do is so I said that I was going to do number four, and that was going to be a new exercise. So what I'll do is let's go ahead and add a new example in here. I want to keep this one intact. So instead of saying going back, let's just say extend, extend example one, and improve it with string format. OK. So now if we go back in here, and I'm just going to copy this line. And remember what I did in here? So I could have done it this way too. So I could say a string that format, and a string that format takes in basically a curly and an index. So I could have done it like this. I could say full name zero at index zero. Then I can say I can have one, which is going to be the next value. And this will make sense as soon as I finish typing in. And then this is going to be three. And then what I'm going to do here, I'm going to say full name. And instead of doing, actually, I need first name because that is the one that I'm going to be replacing with, and then last name, and then H. And I'll show you what this means. So with the string that format, the variables that you need to inject, so the variables that I added in here, first name, last name, and H, I can identify them with an index. I can say, okay, anything after this comma starts at index, index zero. So first name is an in index zero. This one is at index one, and this one is at index two. Every index increments by a comma. So the first one is zero, the other, the other one after the comma is one, and then so on. And that's why you can see when I type in a comma, you basically get a bunch of arguments. That means that you can keep going to the right and it's gonna be incrementing the index. So as you increment that index internally, this is gonna be zero, which is gonna map to first name. This one is gonna be to one, and it's gonna map to last name. And three is going to map to H. So instead of doing this, I was able to replace that with string.format. So now if we go back into Unity, so let me go ahead and 
with a four here, put a four there, stop the game from playing, and then let's go ahead and hit play. And I got an exception. So this is an exception that you normally get when you're starting. It looks like I, I got an exception because I type in the wrong index. So this is actually cool that it happened because it shows you that I didn't have a four. I didn't have, so zero, one, two, I didn't have a three. So that means that I'm out of bounds in the, basically of the index. So if I do this one, two, so zero, one, and two for H, that should work. I, I didn't do that on purpose, but it actually worked out because I wanted to show you how it would error it out. So you can see the full name, John Doe, and then pipe H, it still works by using a string that format. So those are four different examples that I, that I really wanted to show you when dealing with strings. If you guys have any questions, let me know. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions, let me know through the comments. Also, don't forget to check out gamedev.net. They have amazing resources for game developers that are either starting or have advanced experience in the field. Also, don't forget to check out my Patreon, which I'm using to fund this channel. Basically, I'm gonna be looking for getting a video editor, and that video editor professional is gonna help me in editing the future videos. So, Patreon is gonna help me with that. So, thank you very much for watching, guys.